and uh, uh, and I appreciate all the ladies that's helped and cooked and cleaned and all that this church has done to prepare for the meeting. Uh, I know it's a lot of work, and uh, so uh, I wanted to make sure I'd say uh, we appreciate, I know I do, and I know these other preachers do, Amen. everything this church has done for us this week has been a great meeting. I talked to Brother Mitch today, and uh, he's doing better. He's getting, they had put a nerve block in his shoulder uh, and uh, when they operated on his hand, and it went out, uh, the nerve block started going out last night, he said, when he was in bed, and the pain, I mean, the pain in his arm started coming back, and so he had to take, a, got up, they gave him some pain medicine to take, and uh, so he said he took a pill last night, and uh, about the middle of the night, and, and eased the pain off, and he was able to go back to bed and sleep, and so he's doing, he's doing better, he's doing better, so you continue to pray for Brother Mitch, uh, he t said, tell everybody he loves you, he wishes he was here, and uh, you know he when he did it he didn't get to, he didn't get to go to White Plains up there, uh, and uh, and then now they scheduled a surgery this week, and so you continue to remember him in prayer, and ask the Lord to be with him. But Song of Solomon, uh, chapter four, chapter four. Look, we're going to read verse ten and eleven, and then we're going to read thirteen through fifteen. Amen. Verse ten. Now. Uh, this is uh, the groom talking to his bride. He said, How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse? How much better is thy love than wine, and the smell of thine ointments than all spices? Thy lips, O my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under the, uh, thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. Thy plants, and look at, drop down to verse 13. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, campfire, and spikenard. Spikenard and saffron and calamus and cinnamon with all the trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes with all the chief spices. A fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to preach once again. I pray, God, Lord, uh, take the word of God and speak to hearts. Lord, that's the only thing that can help, uh, Lord, anybody is the word of God. So I pray use it, Lord, tonight, uh, God, and speak to your people and have your will and way. And we'll thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, notice this uh, here as it's talking about in verse number, uh, in verse number uh, 10 there. He says, uh, he talks about the smell of thy ointments and then all of thy spices. He says in verse number 11, uh, thy lips drop as in honeycomb, and uh, and then he says, honey and milk are under thy tongue, and uh, drop down to verse 13, he talks about uh, thy plants are an orchid of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, campfire, and spikenard. Now, you uh, probably most of you know what a, a pomegranate is. It's a fruit with a lot of seeds in it uh, and uh, everything, and then, uh, but he says pleasant fruits with camp iron, uh, campfire and spikenard. Now, uh, spikenard is a, a campfire is a fragrant, uh, and it's uh, valued for its uh, for its smell, the scent. Uh, then spikenard is an essential oil, and it's also very fragrant. All of these things are very fragrant uh, spices. And then he says uh, spikenard in verse 14, and saffron, calamus, and cinnamon with all the trees of frankincense, myrrh, and aloes with all the cheap spices. So not only this garden, this garden is a, a garden that has some pleasant fruit in it, but it's also a garden uh, for just to go in and smell the fragrance, enjoy the fragrance of the garden. And uh, so uh, uh, saffron, uh, I, now this is, I looked up, I don't know what any of this, I know a few things about this smell like, but most of them I don't know. Uh, uh, somebody said uh, saffron smells like fr uh, freshly mown grass. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I like I like the smell of grass when it's mowed. I do. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think I'll make a man's cologne. That'd be a good one to make right there. You know, good earthy smell. You know, and uh, uh, I don't know whether women like it, but I'd like it myself. And uh, but uh, uh, calmus has a sweet smell, a, cin a sweet cinnamon. But let me show you something about these. When I, while I'm missing these, I'm mentioning these things. Go over to Exodus 30. Exodus chapter 30, and uh, 
We'll look at verse 23. Exodus 30 and verse number 23. Notice what the Bible says. Uh, let's see. Well, look at verse 22. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh. That was mentioned over there. It said 500 shekels. And then of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even 250 shekels. And of sweet calmus, 250 shekels. And of casea, 500 shekels at the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, and hen. Now notice what, they get all these spices that were just mentioned over there in Song of Solomon, and God is telling the, uh, Moses what to do. He says, And thou shalt make an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound at the art of the apocryphary. It shall be an holy, or an, it shall be an holy anointing oil, and thou shalt anoint the tabernacle congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony. And, uh, and the table and all his vessels and the candlestick and his vessels and the altar of incense. Now notice what he does. He makes this, he makes this holy anointing oil out of all these spices. And they go to the tabernacle and Moses is to anoint everything that's in there. All the furniture, everything with these, uh, uh, with these spices that he has put together. And, uh, and of course you know myrrh uh, was uh, uh, used. It was used in, not only in perfume but it was also used in embalming. And, uh, and then frankincense and uh, aloes. And you go back over to here to Fort, uh, uh, Song of Solomon chapter 4. And uh, so he's got all these spices together, you know. Now, look, uh, well, uh, go back to Psalms 45 before I get over here. We'll just stop there in Psalms 45. And look at verse number 6. Psalms 45, verse number 6. Now, here the Bible talks about he says, in verse uh, 6, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now notice this. He says, All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia, out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. Notice this is our Lord as he comes out of heaven. And notice the fragrance that, uh, that heaven has. He mentions these same spices right here. And so these spices are the, are the fragrance of heaven. That's what, that, that's what you have right here, the fragrance of heaven. And that's what he's talking about over in Song of Solomon, those same spices. And so in this garden that's growing, there's uh, uh, pomegranates, there's pleasant fruit, then all of these spices that, that, and, and, uh, the, that made the anointing oil for the tabernacle, and also that our Lord Jesus Christ came out of heaven to this earth, uh, the, his, all his garments smelled like those spices. Now, then notice what it also says. Look at verse 15. A fountain of garden a well of living waters and streams from Lebanon. So not only this garden it, uh, is very fragrant, it's very fruitful, uh, but it has streams of water coming into it. And the Bible says here, it has a well of living water and streams from Lebanon. Now, uh, the Bible says over there in John 4, you know, when Jesus was talking to that woman at the well, and uh, she said, hey, how about give me the drink? When he said, I have this living water, she said, well, give me the drink so I don't have to come back here and draw. He said, if thou knewest the gift of God, he, you would ask him the living water, which be a well inside of you doing what? Springing up into everlasting life. Amen. That's why it's living water. He said, you can, you can have that if you, if you know it. Now, notice this. So there's a fountain of God, there's uh, gardens, there's a well of springing water, streams from Lebanon. So this garden has everything to offer to, to the people that pass by. And it's got pleasant fruits, it's got sweet smells, it's got living water. I mean, what other garden would a man want or a woman want than a garden like that? Just to be able to walk by and smell and, uh, and uh, listen to the water is flowing in there, the streams of water flowing, uh, 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 springing up. It has everything. Now this garden here is a picture of the church. 
It's a picture of the church. Amen. That's what the church is to be. The church is to be fragrant. We're to have, we're to, we're to offer living water to people that come in. Amen. That uh, they need to go to, they need a drink of water from uh, from that well that'll be springing up inside of them. It's a fragrant garden. The church is to be a fragrant. Now, sometimes I'll have to admit, uh, we're not always fragrant. Sometimes I'm not always fragrant. Sometimes we get up on the wrong side of the bed. Sometimes, uh, you know, we get up, we have an attitude, you know. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I've seen people come to church. Some people can hide it, uh, hide their attitude, but it don't really matter. If you're not right, you still hurt the service. And some people can't hide their attitude. Uh, you know, when they come in the door, uh, you know, either the, uh, they either got in to it with their husband or wife or they left the house and, and they've been fussing all the way. And uh, but they put on a smile. Sometimes they put on a smile. I told my church, listen, if you and your wife fuss and everything before you come to church, just come in as a hypocrite and smile. Don't come into this church. Uh, you know, I said, just be a hypocrite for about an hour, two hours, and smile. Don't let everybody know that you and your wife or you and your husband have been fighting all the way to church. But like I said, most time it's going to hurt the service anyway. Our attitude affects the service. Our attitude will affect the service. It'll, it'll affect the Spirit of God. That's why the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit yeah. of God. Amen. He can be grieved uh, with the way we feel sometimes, with our attitude. Uh, you know, when we get our, I know people you say you get, they got their nose out of joint. I don't know how you do that, but sometimes, sometimes people do that. Amen. I've got my nose out of joint before. And uh, so he's talking about this guard. Now, here's the thing about this guard. Here's the thing about this garden. It's got all this going for it. It's got living waters. It's got the, it's got the, it's got the sweet smell. Uh, let me just show you something right here. Go over to Philippians 4. Go over to Philippians 4. And uh, we're going to look at verse 18. You know, there ought to be some sacrifices in our church. There ought to be some sacrifices. Philippians 4. Notice what Paul says about, and he's talking to, uh, about this church here. In Philippians 4, verse 18. The Bible says here. Paul says, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received the apparatus, the things which were sent from you. Now notice what he says. An older of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. You know, that's what God wants out of our lives. God wants some sacrifices out of our lives. Sometimes, now you say, now listen, sometimes it might sacrifice, you might have to sacrifice to give. Y'all, I, I, you know, y'all do faith promise, our church does too, and I know some people might have to sacrifice to give. The faith promise, I believe God will always supply the need. Uh, but uh, I, I think faith promise is one of the greatest things that you can get involved with. I think it's one of the greatest things. But sometimes God uh, not only wants our money, but he wants us. Amen. He wants us. And uh, Paul was commending this church, though, for what they did for him. Hey, did they sacrifice to get him there? And, you know, I told our church, hey, uh, we ne we'll never see those people that these missionaries go over and witness to, and they get, and they get one to the Lord, and they get saved. We'll never see them, uh, you know. But you know what? We get to heaven, we'll meet them, yeah. and we'll know who they are. Yeah. Uh, uh, we've got, I don't know, uh, uh, I'm trying to get a missionary on, on every continent, and in and, and as many countries as we can to get a missionary there, especially when there's no good gospel witness there, trying to get somebody. You know, if you've got, uh, you got uh, 10, 15, 20 million people, there's no missionary. There's no Bible-leaving missionary there that's uh, trying to breach those people with the gospel. What if that was you and I over there? You know, what if you were somewhere in some foreign country and you were waiting on somebody? Well, you wouldn't even know it, but uh, you knew something was wrong in your life. And you knew that the religion that you were practicing was not doing you any good. Uh, you know, religion don't give anybody any peace. You can, you can join the church. You can get baptized. and You can go through all this rigmarole that people go through. And, uh, you know, and you'll never have any peace until you come to know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. That's the only way you'll have peace. And uh, so now what? So go back, to, uh, go back over to the Song of Solomon. So what is wrong What's going on with this garden? 
It's got everything to offer. Our churches, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're fragrant. We might not be fragrant all the time, but uh, I believe most Bible-even churches try to practice what they preach and uh, are fragrant. We've got pleasant fruits. We've got everything to offer uh, this lost and dying world. Now, the world will just go by up and down the road and just go right by the church. But what's going on now? Notice, here's what's wrong. Look what. Look at verse number 12. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain seal. Now I looked those words up. Uh, enclosed is to fasten up, bolt or lock. To shut up means basically the same thing, to lock something up. To seal is uh, to close up uh, and make an end so, and to stop. So this, uh, th this uh, uh, garden has been closed in, the spring has been shut up, and the fountain's been sealed. So what good is a garden if it can't get out? If it can't, uh, you know, uh, if, if it can't be enjoyed. You see? Now you say, how do, what do we got to do? Well, here's, what's, here's what our churches need right here. Uh, not only gives the problem, but it gives the solution. Uh, look at verse number uh, 16. He says, Awake, O north wind, and come thou south, and blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruit. You know what the bride said? Hey, I, I, she welcomes her bride. She welcomes her groom to come into the garden, and she says, "Hey, uh, come on, breath, begin to blow up on my garden. Hey, and let the world smell what we already know." You see? Now, what is that? You say, preacher, what is that? Well, listen. Uh, in Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7, when God created Adam out of the dust of the ground, what did he do? The Bible says he breathed upon his, uh, on Adam uh, and, and into his nostrils, and Adam became a what? A living soul. Uh, a living soul. Uh, in Ezekiel 37, 9, uh, uh, what you call it, Ezekiel is told to prophesy to a valley of dry bones. And... Uh, and the Lord, uh, he asked the Lord, he says, can these bones live? Uh, and Ezekiel said, thou knowest, O Lord. So he prophesied and the bones came together and, uh, uh, and then he laid sinews on them and flesh and skin. And, uh, and it was, a, it was a, a, a great army, but it was dead. And he said, Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy to the wind. And uh, so Ezekiel began to prophesy to the wind. And as he's, as he's preaching there, he says, come on, breath. And, and blow up on these. And the Bible says they stood up an exceeding great army. What did it take? It took the breath of God. It took the breath of God. Uh, you know, this Bible right here, you know why this Bible can give life when you read it? Because this God breathed. This God breathed. Uh, this Bible right here, this King James Bible, God breathed upon this thing. And this Bible is alive. It's not like any other book. It's alive. And you know what? It can, it can give you life. Thank God it gave me life. It can give you life. And uh, thank God for that. So uh, uh, look over. Uh, see, when, I, when you were saved, I, I got saved when I, I, I was a boy. I got saved, I don't know, I was just 10, 11. I can't remember exactly how old I was. But, uh, you know, the, uh, the preacher was preaching, and, uh, and uh, God got a hold of my heart. And I really didn't know what was going on. You know, I really didn't know what was going on. But, but I felt like my heart come up in my throat. And, uh, and I knew the Holy Spirit was dealing me about, uh, about coming down to the altar. I come down to the altar, and, uh, and I tell you the honest truth, I can't tell you what I said. I can't tell you. I don't remember what I prayed. You say, how do you know if you got saved? Because God don't listen to what you say. God listens to your heart. I've led a lot of people to say the right things. <laughs> that uh, they, they, they were, time they got out the door, it didn't do me any good. I, I, you know, I, I remember I, I went to this visit his house one time. This young man and woman that was coming to our church, and uh, I thought they came several, say several Sundays, and so I thought, well, I'll go see them. And I went out there and saw them, and we sat down in the house. They were very friendly people, and I and I talked to them, and I witnessed to them, and I told them how glad we were they were coming to church, and and I, and I was fixing to leave. And I was just going to leave it like that, and I probably should have. I probably should. So I said, uh, hey, would, would I just asked, I said, would you like to get saved? Would you like to get saved? 
I said, you can get saved tonight if you want to. And uh, I was leaving up there, and they said, sure. So him and his wife got down on the floor. Both of them got down on the floor, got on their knees. And uh, I showed them what the Bible said on how to get saved. And I said, now you just ask the Lord in your own words uh, to pray and ask God. To and so they did that. And so, man, I was out. Man, I was going home. I was, you know how it is. Uh, somebody gets saved. You're on your way home. You're so happy and everything. And thank God for what he's done and everything. I, I never saw him again. I never saw him. They came until they made a profession. And then I, I, like I said, I never saw him again. Now, uh, you can say, they said the right things. They said the right things. But it didn't come through hard. It didn't come through hard. You got to, uh, you know, when you talk to God, you can't fool God. You can fool the preacher. You can fool the church. You can fool deacons. You can fool anybody. But you can't fool God. You know, God knows whether you mean it, whether it comes to your heart. Now, we need, what we need in our church is we need the breath of God in our churches. We need God to, uh, to blow up on our services, amen, and, and, and to take, our, uh, take what's in here in our lives and our fragrance from this church and, and, and take, now how you say, how's it going to get out there? The Holy Spirit is going to carry you out there because you have the fragrance with you. All you got to do is let God use you. And God can take you uh, with, with the Holy Spirit of God and take all of you that are members here at Hopewell Independent Baptist Church and take you out in your community, to your family, wherever you might go, and God can you, use you as a fragrant right. Christian, as a pleasant fruit. Yeah. Hey, and you can lead somebody to the Lord. If you yeah. don't lead them to the Lord, that doesn't really matter. All we do is try. Yeah. You know, God doesn't tell me to save anybody, because I can't save anybody. Yeah, right. Right. But God tells me to go out and at least tell them, yeah. and they have a choice whether they accept it or not. It's their choice. Right. That's all God wants us to do. Uh, you know, God, God doesn't tell me to go out there and win all these people to the Lord. I just give them a choice. But my life is to have a, some fragrance and a sweet smell to it and not some sour attitude, uh, you know. And, you know, not when you leave church and, and, and you're talking about the church and talking about the preacher and this wasn't right and that wasn't right. Uh, you know, listen, everything that happens in a church is not going to please everyone. Everything in my church, sometimes it doesn't please me. Yeah, right. I'm the pastor. Yeah. And it don't please me. You know, everything is not going to be perfect uh, in your church or in your life. If you find a perfect church, uh, well, good, uh, good. It'll be imperfect when you right when you walk in or right when I walk in. Uh, you know, we'll we'll mess it up. That's what men know how to do. But listen, God, uh, you got to overlook some things. That's why the Bible talks about forbearing. You overlook some things. Uh, you know, maybe the brother not what he ought to be. Maybe the sister. Uh, go home and look in the mirror. mirror. It might be you that's not what you ought to be. Amen. Sometimes I got to look at myself in the mirror. You know, sometimes I'm not what I ought to be. Amen. But if I get where I ought to be and have some fragrance in my life, hey, God, can the Holy Spirit can take my life. I can ask God, hey, use me. Use me to bring, uh, bring some fragrance, to bring some fresh life to somebody that needs it. And there's somebody out there that needs it. Now, I know, I, I know the majority of people. If you ever knocked on doors and stuff like that, the majority of people, uh, you know, you, you won't get nowhere with them. Uh, you know, I understand that. I, when I was young, I used to get disappointed about it all the time. I, you get more no's than yeses. And uh, but you know what? That doesn't mean to stop. Right. That doesn't mean to stop. You still got to go. Whether they slam a door in your face or whether they uh, come to the door and they, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, you knock on the door and interrupt their TV program or whatever it was they was trying to watch it. Uh, and they're not too happy when they come to the door. Hey, but no matter what is a keep a fragrance. Keep a fragrance. Now notice what he says here in chapter 5, verse 1. He says, I am coming to my garden. My sister, my spouse, I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Oh, friends, drink, yea, drink abundantly, O oh, beloved. You know, that's what we want our church. We want our Lord to visit our churches. Yes, sir. We want him to visit our churches. Yes, sir. We want to be able to come. Now, I know you're not saved by your feelings, but it's good to feel the Lord sometimes. Yeah, amen. amen. It's good to feel his presence in a service. Amen. And you, hey, you want the Lord to come into your church, to come to be a guard where he can come and he can just enjoy 
being in the service, in the person of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Amen. Just come in and enjoy the services. So we're, our lives are to be holy so he can do that. Right. Now, if your life's not holy, he can't come and have fellowship with you. You know, he's not going to have fellowship with an un, unholy vessel. You know, until you get right and get cleaned up, he's not going to have, he's not going to fellowship with that. Uh, uh, he wants a, he wants a clean vessel. Amen. Amen. He wants a, look, in, take your Bible, look over in Revelation chapter 3. And uh, we'll see here. Now we're living in these uh, days, the Bible talks about in the last days. Revelation 3, look at verse number 20. Notice what the Bible says. Here's the Laodicean church age. Which the age this is the age we're in right now. We're in the Laodicean uh, church, uh, the people's rights. Notice what the Lord says. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. At the end of the church uh, age, where is the Lord? The churches have got him out of the service. He's, he's outside. Yeah. He's not even welcome in his own garden. Yeah, God. They've, already, they've, they've locked the doors on the Lord. Right. You know what the churches have found out? Well, we can get by without the Lord. Wow. You know, we can get by without the Lord. We've, uh, we've got plenty of money. I've got a big crowd. Uh, you know, we've got good offerings, you know, and everything. And so they begin to change things up. We're going to, we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to try. We need some young people. So what's the first thing a church does? Yeah. Uh, that needs young people. You know what do they do? Yeah. They, uh, they start having this up-tempo music. You're right. You're right. They start, the first thing they change. Right. Yep. Right. You've seen signs around here, I guarantee you've seen them here. I've seen them back home. Uh, contemporary service, traditional service for old people yep. at 9 o'clock. Now they don't say old people. That's what they mean. <laughs> They're going to sing the old hymns, but then it has contemporary service yeah, God. at 11 o'clock. And that means they're going to jazz up the music. They're going to sing. Uh, they're going to sing those songs where they just repeat, 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 and, uh, and and you know, what are they trying to do? Now, as a young person, you want know you ought to be. You ought to be insulted about that. You ought to be. If I want, if I want to hear jazzed up music, I'll just I'll just turn the radio on and find me a station that I can listen to jazzed up music. If that's what I want, I don't have to go to church. And uh, listen to a, a jazzed up music trying to sing a, an old hymn. It, does, it just doesn't work. You know? if, I'm, if I wanted to listen to rock music or if I wanted to uh, uh, any kind of music, I, well, I ain't going to listen to rap music. Uh, I, I ain't never been to understand that. But uh, when, I was a young, when I was a young man, I listened to rock music. And, uh, but uh, listen, when my heart got right with God, Quit listening to that. But now listen, if I wanted to listen to rock music, I would listen to rock music. I don't want to go to church and listen to rock right. music in a church. Yeah. You know, I don't, want, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Now they've got Christian rap music and Christian rock music and Christian this, any uh, Christian country music, any kind of music you think. Uh, they just put words, uh, they put Jesus in there every now and then or something like that, and, and they call it. But it's not Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, it's not, there's nothing Christian yeah. about it. It's just the world's music is all it is. And they're trying to attract a bigger crowd. If I have to get a crowd like that, I don't want no crowd. I don't want no crowd like that. You know, if that's the only way you get people, then you've got to keep on doing other things to try to keep people. You know, if God cannot uh, save people and bring them in, then uh, you and I sure ain't going to do it. You know, we're just not going to do it. God... And how does it start? Well, you gotta be, you got to have some fragrance. You know, people, people visit your church, you know. You know what they ought to say when you have visitors come to this church? You ought to, they ought to be able to go out and tell somebody, said, man, that was the friendliest church I've ever been in. Yeah. I bet I got my hand shook 15 times. Yeah. I had people come tell me they were glad to see me. I'm glad you're here. You know, that's what you do. You just don't come in. You just don't come in and sit down and, and uh, you know, sit over here. And the visitors come in and you just look over at them and wonder who that is. Yeah. You know? yeah. I've never seen them before. I don't know. Well, go up and introduce yourself and find out who they are. Yeah. 
you know, and say, hey, we're glad you're here this morning. That's what church is about. We're trying to get people into church. Amen. And so if someone comes, we say, hey, we're glad you stopped by. We appreciate you coming. And, uh, and we, uh, you know, hey, need anything? Hey, we're, we're here to help. We're trying to help people. We're trying to help people. Amen. Listen, what made a lasting impression on me when I was, I was like, I don't know, I think I was 20, 21 years old. I wasn't even married yet. And uh, I, I, there was a revival going on. I don't know any work was going on. But we had to get on the, we had, a, we had to take a van. We loaded up on the van. There was about, I think there was about eight or nine of us got on this van. We went over to this church. And uh, they were having revival. It was an independent, you know, church, Bible, even church. We know where for revival. It was a, it was a good-sized church. It had a big auditorium. And uh, there was a good crowd that night. So we went in. We all sat on one pew, you know, all of our church that uh, had come with us. And uh, I bet I got my hand shook 20 times before service started. People just came by and shook my hand said, and uh and I, I was taught, you know, you always stand up. When I was a young man, you stand up. Uh, you stand up for the warrior head. A man's got gray hair, you stand up. A woman comes by, you stand up. Don't be lazy and sit on some pew and shake some man's hand that's older than you or some woman's hand. Stand up is what the Bible says. You respect them. And so I just kept on standing up and sitting down, standing up and sitting down. And then the service got started. The choir come down. They sang. They come down. Everybody in the choir come right by our row. And we stood up and shook hands and sat down, stood up and shook hands and sat down. You know, it was just over and over and over. And I thought, man, I like that. I liked how friendly this church was. Yeah. And I thought, man, if I lived around here, I'd come, I'd come to this church. Yeah. And so that's what, I, that's what I, I, I've taught my people. Hey, if somebody comes in, you go shake their hand, tell them you're glad you're there. Yeah. We're glad to have you this morning. We appreciate you coming. Right. Amen. Why? Because I ain't going to win anywhere else. And you say, well, what if they don't come back? Hey, so what? You told them you were glad. You were glad they came. You know, make people feel, hey, sure. like, hey, this that was a good, friendly church. That was a good, friendly church. And, uh, uh, you know, just let people know, hey, we're not, we're not all, we don't, you know, lot, people got a lot of thoughts about what they think a church is. You know, they, people, the world got a lot of different thoughts what they think a church is. But they come into a church that's friendly, and they got they sing the old they sing still sing the old hymn that speaks to your heart. You got a preacher that stands up and preaches the word of God. Hey, that's what that's what they're looking for. Hey, Amen. That's what they're looking for. They might not know what they might not know what they're saying, you know. But it's that fragrance. It's that fragrance and that uh, that that pleasant fruit. Hey, Amen. That's what a church needs to be, and it needs the breath of God blow on it. Hey, to be able to get those take you and I out to church out in our communities, out where you live, hey, and spread that fragrance all around us. Hey, that's all the Lord wants from us. Amen. That's all he wants from you. You don't have to go out and try to uh, win somebody to the Lord. You just go out there and try to be a fragrant Christian. And if they ask you, you can tell them. You know, but you're just trying to, you're just trying to be a fragrant. Don't you like people that are friendly? Amen. You know, I like people. You, people that are real friendly, people are attracted to them. Amen. That's what I want. I want. I want people to be not because of me, but because of the Lord. Because yeah, I guarantee you, people aren't going to be attracted to me. Amen. I ain't got one of those. I don't have a charismatic personality. I am not. That's just not me. Uh, my wife will talk to you as long as you want to talk. <laughs> Amen. Now I'll talk to people because. Uh, you know, when I first started preaching, I wouldn't even talk about anybody. And I didn't know why the Lord called me to preach. So, uh, I've, you know, I've learned to talk and, you know, and stuff like that. But, you know, sometimes you just got to get out of your comfort zone and do something okay. that you're not comfortable. You say, well, I'm shy. Well, I was too. I was too. But you got to overcome that. Overcome that with the help of the Lord. Now, some people got the gift of gab. Uh, you know, they can just talk. My preacher's wife. Some of you do my preacher, Brother Earl Cook. His wife, Miss Cook, Brother Earl used to say she would talk to a sign post if it would talk back. And she would. Uh, first time I went to Victory Baptist Church, uh, she started talking to me. I didn't, I, you know, I know who she was. And uh, I found out she's the preacher's wife. But she was so friendly. 
she was so friendly to me and uh, come up and, uh, you know, talk to me. And then she began to tell me. Now, the preacher didn't do this. And when I went to church, I had, I had started going to church. I had hair over my ears. I had blue jeans on. And I'm not, I'm not against blue jeans. Don't get me wrong. I'm just going to tell you this story. I had blue jeans on. I had hair over. And I wore a little necklace that had a uh, buffalo nickel on it. It was a buffalo. It was an old nickel. And I drilled a hole in it. And I had, you know, a little chain hung around my neck. First thing uh, Miss Cook started talking to me about, she said, uh, son, there's what she told me. She said, son, men don't wear necklaces. <laughs> she said, men just don't wear necklaces. I never thought about it. I'd seen other men have that. I didn't think of that wrong. So I said, well, okay, I won't wear it. And I took it off. I took it off. Another time she came up to me and said, son, would you please start wearing some dress pants to church? <laughs> I said, okay, Miss Cook, I'll, I'll, I'll quit wearing blue jeans and I'll wear dress pants to church. I didn't get offended at her. She was just as friendly as she could be. And she was just trying to help me. And she would talk to me like a, like a mother would. And that's the way I took it. I, I didn't get all up and say, well, I ain't coming back to this church. I took it the way she talked to me. Got rid of my necklace, got rid of my, got rid of my uh, blue jeans, and uh, I went to hear a preacher. Uh, being my pastor, I went to hear Brother Rudolph Lemons. Some of y'all remember him. And he turned over in the Bible and the book of Jeremiah somewhere. And I, me and the preacher were sitting on the front row right here, and the Brother Rudolph was right there. And my hair was still over my hair, but, I, you know, I'd kind of brush it back some, but it was still long. Brother Rudolph got there, and he said, to turn to Jeremiah so-and-so in such after, you know. So I turned to my Bible, and if I could remember the verse right now, I would tell you what it was. But it said, cut off thine hair, old Jerusalem. <laughs> I thought, man, alive, he's going to preach on long hair, and I'm sitting right here on the front row, and he's going to preach on long hair. And he started reading his Bible, and it wasn't. It wasn't. And so I went home that night, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I dreamed that I was sitting in the barber chair, and my preacher, Brother Earl, was cutting my hair. <laughs> I thought, Lord is telling me something right here. The Lord trying to tell me something. Uh, you know, if I quit being dense, uh, that I need to get my haircut. And I, said, I, went that, I went the next day, got me a haircut, got it over my ears, and I keep it over there. Uh, you know, I don't have long hair now. I mean, I, at one time it was way long, uh, but now I don't have it. Of course, that's back in the 70s. You look at people back in the 70s, they, they look kind of uh, faded blue jeans, flannel shirts, and long scraggly hair. That's what people look back in the 70s. It's nothing to copy. Believe me, it's nothing to copy. But that's how, you see, she, she used a mother's influence. That's how you help people. You just don't go up there and tell them, you need to quit this. You need to stop that. You know, now, God will deal, but you can help people. But you've got to do it in the right spirit, in the right way. Miss Cook was good at that. She was good. I loved her to death. I loved her to death. Because uh, she helped me. Amen. And that's what God wants us to do. God just wants us to help people. You know, not, you know. We're not here to condemn people. Lord, they're already, they're already under the condemnation right, of God. Right, right. You know, we're just trying to help them. Amen. Help them. And if, they, and if they're saved, then that's where you, if, they, if they're not saved, they get them saved. That'll be the biggest help. But I, I was saved then. I was saved. But I just got out in the world a little bit. Yeah. You know, I got out in the world and I started looking like the world. And so Miss Cook began to work on it. She talked to me, and the Lord dealt in my heart. And, and I didn't have any trouble getting rid of those things. I didn't have a bit of trouble. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was backing up everything she said. Amen. And, 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 that, and you don't get offended at something uh, the preacher said or somebody else said. But listen, don't uh, say something that sounds offensive to somebody. You, know, you, can say every, you can say anything in the right way. You say it in the right way with the right spirit. That's what you got to have. Amen. Amen, preacher. Here. Get the receipt. I know it was a couple of years ago, uh, we went out to Colorado, some of us men, and elk hunting. And uh, we went 
early in the morning before the daylight and walked in. We had scouted some places out. We're going to go hunt. And we got, I got in this place, and I walked in. It was pitch dark, and the light come up, and I could begin to see in there. And it's the beautifulest woods I've ever walked in. There's a stream flowing down through there. There's green trees. I can still see it in my mind's eye. And the smell of it out there in those woods. It's the beautifulest place I've ever been. The sun came up, and it was like, there I was. And I got thinking about that when I was preaching that just a moment ago. And I wonder if when people come in our churches and the word of God's flowing like that water and the smell's there and the fruit of God's there, I wonder if they could say, that's, that's, that's the beautifulest place I ever walked in. That's the beautifulest garden I've ever been in. You, you know, you walk in a garden like that or a place like that and you spend time in there and the smell's there. Uh, that if you hang around it long enough, it's going to get all over you. And when you leave, they're going to be like, hey, where have you been? Yeah, right. Amen. I wonder when we, when we walk out in this old world and people get a spiritual whiff of us and they say, hey, where have you been? Yeah, that's good. Is it that sweet smell of God? Is the, is the river of God flowing down in our souls? Is, is our churches presenting that type of garden where the Lord's welcome and there's help there and refreshment for weary souls. And we need that in our church. Yeah, amen. 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 I don't want people to come in here and the weeds are overgrown in our garden, yeah. overtaking the fruit and damming up the flow of yeah. the water flowing. I don't want it to be beautiful and, and God be glorified and people say, hey, I, I've been with God. Yeah. I've been around that garden of God where, where he walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Amen. That's, yeah. Boy, that's good, brother. I appreciate yeah. that. I pray that our churches are like that. Amen. I pray our I pray the church and our pastors like that. When people come in, they've been in the garden of God and been around the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we need that. Amen. 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 That's good. God's amazing grace. shame opened up my eyes and brought salvation now I'm his praise his holy name now I know that he is mine and I'm his forever he is leading life's way he'll be holding to my hand when I cross death's river he will take the sting of death away tis so sweet just to know that I have Jesus with me he is leading me along life's way. He delivered me from condemnation. Now I have eternal life. Now I know that he is mine and I'm his forever. Leading me along life's way. He'll be holding to my hand when I cross this river. He will take the sting of death away. He will take the sting of death away. You see before you, I've not always been. I once was.
hearts so broken and battered by sin. And the story that I tell you is such a marvelous thing. How love brought together a beggar and a king. I traded for riches the rags of my soul. I gave him the pieces and he made me whole. I brought to him nothing and he gave me everything. He found a beggar. And I found a king. Now you see that so hard for you to believe. Well, all I can say is that I agree. ever seen. There has never been a greater than how Jesus loves me. I traded for riches the rags of my soul. I gave him the pieces and he made me whole. I brought to him nothing, and he gave me everything. He found a beggar, and I found a king. I brought to him nothing, and he gave me everything. He found this old beggar, and I found a king. Down a memory lane, I passed not long ago. Old Satan came right by my side, making me feel low. He brought up the loss of hurt and pain when I had gone astray. He wanted to discourage me as I walked along my way. place with me in hell. Well, I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all the things I've done. I sure deserve to die. My righteousness is filthy rags, and my goodness is unclean. But there's only one thing I can say. What you said to me, it's under the blood. 
Church in Moxville, amen. amen. Miss Dawn, good to see you. Had surgery early this morning in his church tonight. <laughs> amen. You can't be that's a sweet smell to the Lord, ain't it? Amen. Appreciate it, amen. Thank you, Lord. My wife wanted me to say that they told me that today is Halloween. Yeah. She said, they said, we'd get the scariest preacher tonight to get up preach <laughs> <laughs> We get that scared, amen. <laughs> All right, you may be seated. Thank God for the service tonight thus far. I told my wife the same thing. I said, I guess it's just appropriate to have me preach on the devil's night. <laughs> but I appreciate your pastor and appreciate this church. Amen. I like what Brother Chris was talking about, this being a friendly place. It is a friendly church. Amen. All independent Baptists ain't like that. Yeah, right. Amen. Yeah, right. I told my folks Sunday morning, just this past Sunday morning, I made this statement. I said, you know, nobody knows what Jesus looks like. Yeah. You don't know what he looked like. Right, right. You ain't got a clue what he looked like. Mm -hmm. I said, so now if he was to come in here this morning, dressed like we're dressed, some of you leave and never even know he was here. Right. Right. They don't hunt the visitors down and speak to him. I agree with you, Chris. There's something wrong. Appreciate good churches that's friendly. Appreciate Brother Mike Cartman. He's a blessing. I know he made one real bad decision in his life. But other than that, he's always been pretty straight up. He's a... You pray for your pastor. You pray for your pastor. He uh, takes his stand, clear, straight, and firm against him. Against this Halloween junk, and in spite of his wife, jumps to church looking like a spook, <laughs> trying to win the first place prize and preaching, preaching against it. I try to get even. It's hard to get even with her. She picks on me pretty hard. Got your Bible tonight? Turn to Romans chapter 
verse 10, please. What's been a good meeting? I say amen to what Brother Chris said about thanking the church. Every pastor that ever hosts a meeting, he knows how much work's involved. And if your church is like most churches, it's always the same handful, does it? And so I appreciate the work and effort that's went into it this week. Appreciate all the good preaching, man. Boy, I've been some good preaching. Uh, I come to get help and got help. That's right. Sometimes you get cold yourself, just get burnt out. Just get, uh, if you ain't careful, you'll get to uh, feeling sorry for yourself sometimes. Amen. Preachers go through that. Your pastor goes through hours that you ain't got a clue what he's going through. It's always good to come get around other men of God and get encouraged. I have certainly enjoyed that this week. All right, if you got your Bible, Romans chapter 10 tonight, and some very familiar scripture. I love these verses. I'll try and just preach a few minutes. Really, we'll be done, let you go. And uh, verse number 9, the word of God said, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall get baptized or did I, I guess I missed some. Oh, oh, and and thou shalt take communion. Thou shalt get your hair cut and cover up your tattoos and all that. No, no, it don't say that. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart. God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why don't you thank God for that verse? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13 says, For the elect shall call upon excuse me, for whosoever, that makes a liar out of Calvinists, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That don't mean some drunk wakes up with a hangover and says, oh, my God, I don't mean him, but somebody with com a convicted heart uh, knows they're in desperation, knows they're lost and on their way to hell. You don't get saved till you realize you're lost. And if they'll call upon the name of the Lord, my Bible said, they shall be saved. And then I heard these verses read, someone read them this morning. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Now watch this, preachers. And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. I want to say tonight what a privilege it is to be a preacher. You ain't going to hear me poor mouth the minister. What an honor it is. I'm not saying that to puff up your head. One of the quickest ways for a preacher to be done is get full of pride. But what a, what a privilege it is, what, a, what an honor it is, but yet what a responsibility that a man of God carries. The world tonight is ignorant of what real preaching is. They're ignorant of what real preaching is. May I say to you tonight that the average church goer in America is ignorant of what a real Bible preacher is about. I'm telling you, you got people tonight with their name on independent Baptist church rolls in North Carolina that actually believe that Ken Copeland is a preacher. 
They actually believe that Benny Hinn is a preacher. And they believe that Smiley down there in Houston is a preacher. The world has no clue tonight what a God called preacher is. Amen, amen. Now, we've had a lot of preachers, a lot of men of God the last 20 years that's left us. Men that molded and shaped me into the ministry. I mean, many of them have left in the last 20 years, if you've noticed that. And I'm bothered tonight by what's replacing most of them. I'm not against seminary if it's used right, but I'm against the, these bunch of seminary-manufactured punks coming out with more education than they got sense. Amen and amen and amen. And I've got every right tonight. I've been saved for 62 years. I've been preaching almost for 40 years now. And I was raised in a preacher's home. I know what preaching is about. And I'm bothered tonight by a lack of old-fashioned preaching going on in our country in a day when it's needed more than ever, ever before. Glad tonight there are some good young preachers. I told the men of God we were sitting on the porch for service, and I'm saying it thrills me to hear some of the young men that we've heard here this week. I mean, good preaching. But I'm bothered tonight by the new independent Baptist movement as a whole because they're putting out too many, too many pulpits where old-fashioned men of God stood are being replaced with just Baptist counsel. I'm not a psychiatrist. Yeah. Hey Amen. Yeah. I'm a preacher. Yeah. I want to preach tonight for a few minutes on yesterday's preachers. Yesterday's preachers. Old-fashioned, Holy Ghost-filled preaching is becoming a thing of the past in this country. If you come to Hopewell all the time, you may be looking at me like some of y'all are like, that man's lost his mind. Well, see, you don't know what's going on in a lot of these other Baptist churches, and you base it all on what you're hearing here or hearing in this count meeting in these other churches represented. I'm telling you, I've been places, I know places tonight I know a place where my dad used to preach a revival every year. I preached there myself. They ran over 600 people back in a day when they weren't doing nothing but preaching to get them. Tonight, that doors of that church is shut up because a young man came out of liberty and thought he had a brain in his head. Come in there and tell him he was smarter than the old preacher and tried to change the word of God yeah. and he ended up destroying that place. Yeah. I hope the Lord comes before I get back to Ashburn. Yeah. I really hope he comes before we get done preaching tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to hear Craig no way. <laughs> I hope he'll come. I hope he'll come and tonight would be just fine with me if he'd yeah. come right now. Yeah. But if he don't come for another yeah. 20 years, Say, preacher, surely he will. Well, I thought he would 20 years ago, too. But he'll come right on time. But if he don't come for another 20 years, it ain't going to make much difference to me. But what about our grandchildren? You say, well, we'll never have one in here that don't rear back and preach. You better be careful about making statements like that, friend. You better be real careful. The Bible said it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. Now, he didn't say foolish preaching. The foolishness, what the world considers foolishness, by that kind of preaching, it pleased God to save them that are lost. We've had some good singing around here this week. I like good singing. Yeah, I like music. Stirs me, man. 
Son, I'm be sitting in a restaurant down here, an old song I heard 40 years ago, Brother Chris, catch my foot pat, and I think, dear God, I got to quit that. It's just something about music that'll move you. So my soul's been thrilled this week with the preaching Lord of God, but what kind of singing we've had to prepare the man of God. Brother Dave was going to preach last night after that bunch got done singing. Brother Kim and I thought, dear God, boy, I'd like to preach now. Son, it's easy to preach when, the, when they then open the door with good singing. But I'm going to tell you something. Singing will not save America. It's going to take all fashion, Holy Ghost filled, King James Bible believing, preaching to save this country. I'm different. I'm different a lot of preachers. I still believe. I still believe there's hope for America. Say, preacher, I believe America's gone. I believe, let me tell you something. I believe she probably is too, but she don't have to be. But if it ever gets straightened out, it's going to get straightened out by old-fashioned Holy Ghost field. Old-fashioned King James Bible believing. Preaching is the hope for this country. Well, thank God for you young men that's coming along. You say, well, preacher, I'm going to tell you right now, I disagree with you. I, I enjoy singing better than preaching. Well, let me tell you why. Because you ain't right with God. You say, now my mom, your mama might not be right with God. Anybody enjoys the singing better than the preaching? Something wrong with you spiritually. Amen, amen. We need preaching. We don't need pills, more pills. We don't need politicians. We don't need puppets. We don't need peace treaties. We don't need poems. We don't need philosophy. We don't need performances. We don't need to be petted. We don't need more pleasure. We don't need a pillow. We don't need priests. And we don't need poem readers. What we need is preachers of the Word of God. Amen, amen, amen. I'm a Trump man. I'm a Trump man. If you ain't, if you ain't, don't shake hands with me after I preach. Please. I'm sorry. I don't shake hands with you. You're part of what's wrong with this country. I don't, I don't shake hands. I got cousins. Well, they used to be cousins. Some of them, some of them I know voted for Obama. I said, they ain't my cousins no more. I, amen, amen, amen. I'm a Trump man. I'm all for Donald Trump. Amen. I see some more of you. But let me tell you something. I know Christians that defend Trump quicker than they will their preacher. I guarantee you, I don't care if I go to Walmart. My wife don't even want to go me nowhere right now. If I go to Walmart, and she told me who went to vote early, said, don't say nothing. She wouldn't let me wear my Trump hat. I walked in. I said, I'll be good, promise. That one went to hand me that. I said, it won't take this second. I know why. I won't, won't take me long, right? Uh, something inside his name. She said, quit, quit. I'm a Trump man. I'm going to defend him at Walmart. I'll defend him at Food Line. I'll defend him in a Baptist church. But if you defend Trump, and won't defend your pastor, you're no good. Amen, amen. If you're out town next week and you hear over here somebody on the other side of the aisle criticize this meeting or saying something negative about Mike Carpenter, you ought to go around there. He said, let me tell you something. That's my preacher, and he's ten times what you are, and keep your mouth shut about my preacher. They preach that's ugly. No, that's the way the old timers used to be. That's what I was raised on. Amen, amen. Well, the preacher's all right, but he makes too much money. Really? If a ball player, and I'm glad the World Series is over. I hated both of them. But I like ball. If a ball player can make $70 million a year and can't even speak English. Can make $70 million a year in this country 
Every man of God in here deserves to make more than he does. I'm not expecting to. The Bible said he's worthy of double honor. Amen, amen. I got to get to my message here. Taylor Swift. That godless piece of slop. Listen, you know what she made last year? $345 million. You say, preacher, that's a disgrace to this country. I agree. But it ain't near as disgrace as somebody that'll sit back and let somebody run down their preacher. Amen, 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 amen. I won't let my mama, she's gone, I won't let my mama run down my pastor. I won't let my wife run down my past. I won't let my kids run down my past. It's time America turns back to God. And if we're going to make America great again, it ain't going to be Donald Trump. It's going to be old-fashioned churches like this one right here. And if they're going to be old-fashioned and get it done right, we've got to love the man of God. Amen. When a nation ignores God's preachers, disaster comes. Study the history of Israel. Study the history of Germany and England. And America's in trouble tonight. America misses men like Peter Ruckman. America's missing men tonight like old J. Frank Norris. We miss Harold Sattler and Oliver Green. Hey, we miss Mays Jackson and Lester Roloff. We miss Carl Lackey and Tom Tuggle and Rudolph Lemons and Earl Cook and Mud Boy and Jason Coley. We miss them all men of God tonight. We miss them. Yesterday's men of God, yesterday's preachers. Let me give you three points and I'll be done. Yesterday's preachers. Number one, they denounced sin. Yes, sir. Amen. We ain't bothered by sin in our churches no more like we used to be. Did you know that? Amen. And old men of God years ago didn't mess around with it. They didn't mess around with it. They called it what it was. Christians don't fear sin anymore today. Because it ain't being denounced in the pulpits across America. Amen. Somebody said, preacher, would you preach something? Help our marriage? I'm going to tell you something. Your marriage won't ever be nothing like it ought to be until you become what you ought to be. We got too many people trying. We got too many carnal Christians trying to have good marriages. We got too many carnal Christians trying to have good youngins. Listen, carnality, you'll never be what God wants you to be till you get right. Quit trying to get your husband right and you get right. Quit trying to get your wife right and you both get right. And that's what makes up our church. Denouncing yes, yes, yes. sin. How's your life for preacher Mike? Get up and say, now next week we'll have a meeting and John the Baptist will come back alive. He's going to come preach. John the Baptist. Well, Kevin, I don't even know if I'm going to sit down here with John the Baptist. John the Baptist wouldn't care how pretty you was, how pretty a clothes you had on. Old John the Baptist walked right down and lay his finger right on your nose and say, you ain't supposed to have her. Dear God, that'll get your head cut off. Amen. How'd you like to have somebody like John the Baptist come? But I, I can't believe what I can't believe what that Tuggle guy said that night. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't even thought nothing else about it. John the Baptist come here and preach tonight. Yeah. Nathan looked at the king yeah. that had power to have his head cut off for what he said, yeah. and Nathan said, "Listen, king, you are the man." It's you that I'm talking about. Yeah. It, the sin is in the camp right. of the king that's blocking this blessing yeah. of God. Right. I'm amazed how Baptists have such a partial view of sin. 
A lot of Baptists are hung up on the outward sins. Drunkenness. We all know that's a sin. Cussing. Pornography. Amen. Beating up your wife. Abusing or beating up your husband. Abusing the kids. We know all that's wrong. We know the queers is wrong and the stealing's wrong and the white short dresses is wrong. We know all that fornicating's wrong. But you know what some of these Pharisaical Baptists or somebody like that walks in the church? Oh, Baptists are bad about it. Preachers are bad about it. Preachers' wives are notorious for it. Ever seen when somebody walk in? What's the matter? Look at here. Yeah. What? Look at here. Yeah. What? <laughs> You're right, well, what's the big deal? It's church. Yeah. Well, you know, I've done what she's done. I want to come in here like I ain't never done nothing. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Oh, we know all. We know. We know everything wrong with everybody. Yeah. We know everything wrong with everybody's young and self powers. Yeah. Amen. We know everything wrong with everybody's killing people, set powers. Right. And we'll make it known to everybody what's wrong with all of them, but don't shut up your mouth about ours. Yeah, you're right, preacher. That's in all Baptist churches. Yeah, right. yeah. Amen. Let me tell you something. Did you know did you know he smokes? No, but I'd buy you a pack if you promise to suck them all down your throat. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I never had no cigarette. I never known no cigarette to hurt no church. Yeah. But I've known a bitterness to destroy. Yeah. Right. What about gossip? Right. Oh, it's all, it, oh, boy, that fornicating and that, that, that pornography and all that stuff's of hell. Right. Yeah. But what about when I want to get with my, on the phone, on the hell of phone, yeah. and talk about everybody else in the church? Yeah. I read my Bible. I never read my Bible. The word said that God hated a divorced person. Yeah. But I've read Proverbs where he hates those, listen, that sow discord among the brethren. God Almighty is concerned about what we've got left. I know some Baptists ain't concerned about it. Boy, we're right with God. We're real spiritual, except for shaking one or two people's hands. I know some Baptists rather go to hell than get right with other people. Amen, amen. I'm talking about denouncing sin, dismissing from the modern day preaching. Loving money is the worst sin there is. Well, now, preacher, that kind of startled me. I kind of like, well, listen. The Bible said, and there's no one having it. He says sin to have it. He said, but the love of money is the root of all sin. I hate the doctrine. But I hate the Yankees. I'm so glad that mess is over. I liked old Pete Rose. Amen. Pete Rose didn't do no more than some Catholic playing bingo. And I'll tell you right now, I don't think you I don't I don't I don't think Pete Rose ought to be in the Hall of Fame. And then they'll go right there to the store and buy a lottery ticket. I get sick and tired of when I stop at a store and I, we can get gas for the card, but I gotta get me a drink, I gotta go inside and stand behind fourteen people and half of them church members buying them lottery tickets. Amen, amen. Preacher, I had one of my members ask me, said, I don't know, what's wrong with that? I said, you shouldn't have to ask me that. Yeah. Amen. The judge shall live by faith, not by the luck of no draw. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I'd hate to think I took God's money yeah. that he gave me and spend it on some old stinking lottery. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Well, let's see. That didn't go over so well. The old preacher, number one, they denounced sin. Number two, they were dedicated to the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. They studied. Yeah. 
to show themselves not approved of no Baptist church, but under God. They rightly divided the word of truth. I thank God for that. They didn't waste time promoting schools. Now, I'm not against schools. I'm not at all against schools. Brother David's got a tremendous Christian school up there. But he got up and preached last night and never even said nothing about it. Yeah. I, have, I have a problem with preachers can't separate school from the church. Christ died for the church. Right. And all preachers used to exalt Jesus Christ yeah. and not schools and not suppers and not singings, but old-fashioned preaching yeah. of the good word of God. Yeah. Amen, amen. Billy Sunday never did storm a town with an ESV. I know I'm on the internet, but I'm too old to care anymore. Brother Craig, I remember two preachers went with me and you to Israel. Two preachers went with me and him to Israel. Our age, which was young back then. And, uh, and and they both of them were doctors. I like a doctor around. I'm, you may get sick or something. Yeah. Both of them were doctors, Brother Kevin, but tonight neither one of them are in the ministry. I'm not glorying in that. I'm not glorying in that. I'm going to say this to all the young preachers. Especially this mouthing up here a little bit tonight. <laughs> Boys, if you can quit, you're to quit. Yeah, that's right. I had young preachers kept coming to me, preacher, I didn't feel like the Lord called me to preach. I said, bull. Preacher. I said, don't do it. If I can talk him out of everything, then do it. If God's called him to preach, I can't talk him out of it. If you can quit tonight, you ought to quit. Yeah. I believe, praise God, thank God, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. There ain't no time to retire. It's time to roll back our sleeves and declare to a world that hates God, hates Jesus Christ, hates our churches, hates me and you, and hates our Bible. Stand up and say, hear ye, hear ye, thus saith the Lord God Almighty. Amen. When I left here to be church administrators, that boy asked me that one time. I put him out of the church. Made him and his mom both mad. Well, he wasn't coming. She was, but he wasn't. And he drove right by my church every Sunday to go down the road 20 miles and go to church with his girlfriend. I sent letters to all of them. I said, I'll give you 30 days. If you don't come, you're no longer be a member of this church. That goes over real well. Yeah. I've never seen him before. Somebody comes sliding up in my driveway. I heard him. I looked and I went to the door and I said, can I help you? He said, yeah, I need to talk to you. All right. You ain't coming in here. I step outside. They can I hit what's the problem? He said, I don't know who made you the administrator of that church. I said, who made me what? Who made you the minister? I said, I, I'm, I'm not no minister. I'm a pastor. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, I love that church. My, I, I was in that church four years ago. I said, you ain't going to be if you don't come back within 30 days. <laughs> Say, preach, that's being ugly. Let me tell you something. Bless God, you can't be a member of the Moose Lodge and not go. Hey, yeah. man, you can't be a no member of, the, of nothing down to the school on no board and not go. Yeah. You ain't got no business being no dead weight part of no church if you ain't going to go. About as popular as a model forward, but it's the truth. It'll bl God blesses it, amen. Yeah. amen. Many of these little, these little panty waist Nancy's spend more time playing video games than they do in the book. Preachers, preachers play more, play video games more than they study the Bible. These preachers. I, I, somebody told me about a Baptist church in our area. Craig, you know where it's at very well. 
and said it to, they said their pastor, they couldn't even talk to him and he's around for him, playing on his phone. How pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about being dedicated to the Word of God. Yeah. Kill him, but fat and preach my last revival, preacher from Arkansas. Brother Mike, he told me, he said, Brother Tuggle was talking about Calvinism. He said, over in Arkansas and Missouri, your part of the country is known now to be flooded with Calvinism. When I grew up, I thought it was a cuss word. But I, I would have never said that word in front of my mom and daddy, Calvinism. Because my daddy preached it, go, Lord, God have mercy. How hard. Oh, Earl Cook and Rudolph and them guys, they kept that junk preached out of this area. But now we got too many even pastors and evangelists. Right. All they study is, put, is getting together some little hallelujah sermon to maybe get them a meeting somewhere. They ain't trying to indoctrinate people the word of God. I'm going to tell you something. I'm on record right now, and I'll answer to God for saying this. There ain't no Calvinist ever going to get in my pulpit if I know it. I'd soon to have a demon-possessed wholeness as I have a Calvinist in my pulpit. Amen. Yesterday's preachers, they announced sin and they were dedicated to the scriptures. Number three, and last of all, they declared salvation. You must be born again. There's no such thing as, as evolution and salvation. Just coming in and mingling with the church people and it just rubbing off on you and you evolving into a believer. No, no, no. Jesus said you must be born again. You say, well, my denomination don't word it like that. Your denomination don't word it like Jesus said it did. The old-fashioned preachers declared salvation. Salvation's a birth tonight. It's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Without him, it's heaven. I mean, without him, it's hell. With him, it's heaven. But without him, it's hell. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Some people say Ted Tuck was too dogmatic. Jesus was pretty dogmatic. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That's pretty dogmatic, isn't it? That thief on the cross, that old thief on the cross hung there when one of them was running his mouth. One of them told the other one, said, shut your mouth. You and me is getting what we deserve. But this man, this man has done no wrong. And he said to him, he said, when you enter into your kingdom, would you please remember me? And Jesus said to him, today, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Friend, there is salvation by grace through faith. Amen. Accepted what the Lord said and believed what he said. He didn't get baptized. He couldn't join nobody's church. He never done one good deed to try it off, said all them bad deeds he'd done. But when he opened up his eyes, he was in the presence of Jesus Christ. kept no laws. He took no sacraments. He couldn't blow up no schools for, for Muhammad. And Jesus Christ, let me say this to you, I'm done. Declaring salvation. It's Jesus without what? It's Jesus without works. It's Jesus without communion. It's Jesus without Christian education. It's Jesus without any kind of Bible degree. It's Jesus Christ without any good deeds. It's him without beads and candles. It's Jesus without the Watchtower magazine. It's Jesus Christ without the uh, promise keepers. It's Jesus Christ without the masons. It's Jesus Christ without the Muslims. 
Jesus Christ without anything or anybody. Yes. Lord God, how we must simplify salvation. But now too many of our independent Baptist churches, I'm not talking about the Southern Baptists. I done blasted them for 39 years. It's time to get to independent now. Too many independent Baptists don't have the power of God in their churches that the Southern Baptists had in them when I was in college. I got saved in a Southern Baptist church where the power of God was, where the old-fashioned people was a praising God and shouting yeah. during the service. Uh, I, I got in one of them here a while back by accident. I got invited to go to a church I've never been to before to preach, and, and I was following that demon-possessed GPS. <laughs> this was a new church, and they didn't have it on there yet, I guess. It took me right by it. Right around the corner, the little Southern Baptist Church. I didn't know it, but there's cars everywhere. I thought I was the right place. I went in. I thought, man, they started early. But they had a young choir up here. They was singing. And them young ones was testifying. I'm sitting back there by where Brother David is, and the people got to shouting. I got to shouting with them. I was in the wrong church. I sat there shouting, man, I thought I had me a good time. I looked up and I thought, my God, it's 20 minutes till church time. You think some of my buddies ought to be here, but now I got up and asked him, I was in the wrong church. But I felt a little touch of God where I was there. I wish we had it again. I wish we could get it back in our churches. You say, preacher, we got it, you better cherish it. You better cherish it. Don't you take it for granted. Listen, the devil can tear this church all to pieces. Amen, amen, amen. You better cherish the touch of God. It's on Hopewell Baptist Church. Pray for your preacher. Say he makes me stay. Yes, so do you. Well, I don't like some things he does. You ain't going to have to answer to God for none of them. He'll answer to God for every decision made this church while he's a pastor of it. So pray for him. Lift him up. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Listen, you say, well, preacher, I don't really, I don't really like them. Well, I don't like me sometimes. Brother Kevin, while Brother Kevin comes to the altar, we're going to turn it back over. Brother Mike. There's some preachers that are, that are keeping going like it should. Amen. Right, preacher. That's all we need is amen. We need it. Maybe God spoke to your heart about something. You come on. Maybe you're hearing your laws. You need to be saved. Maybe you lost the love for the place of God. Maybe you're the reason the garden's not sweet. Oh, God, help us keep the garden like you should. God, help us. Amen. Good preaching tonight. We're going to give an account to our part. God, help us to stay safe. Good Lord, y'all come sing a song while we pray. You help me sing, they're going to sing a song. You come if you need to talk to the Lord. God, will help you tonight if you'll let him. God will help you. Never lose the love for the place where you worship the Lord. Amen. Never lose your love for the Lord. May he ever be welcome and glorified. Preacher man stood there in the pulpit. The church house was empty almost. His eyes filled with tears, his mind filled with memories of not so long ago when the church house was full. Not one pew was empty, and the altar was stained with saints' tears. And as he stands there this morning in a near empty church house, his opening remarks. 
books are these words. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. The way is still straight. There's a race to It's already Thursday. One more day, amen. Yes, sir. Brother uh, Ted has a revival next Monday through Wednesday. Brother who? Rick Parker will be preaching Monday through Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Uh, pray for the meeting. Go support it if you can. Amen. It's a good church. Let them do results you want up there next week, so you pray God to bless them, amen, as he comes up to preach for them at 7 o'clock. That's in Moxville, amen, you remember that prayer, amen. Yes, ma'am. In Moxville, in Moxville. Amen, continue to remember one another, amen, we got one more night, one more morning and night. It started out great, it's been great all week, let's finish this thing on a high note, let's all be in a place, invite somebody out, let's pack this thing out, amen. Worship the Lord, amen. So you be in your place. Appreciate all the work that's been done. I'm sure a lot of you are tired. I've uh, been hanging out late and the food and the services you've been doing around here. And I appreciate our church and the way you've labored. But amen. Let's don't stop short of the end. Let's finish this thing strong and trust the Lord to do something great uh, with us tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock till 12, and then lunch, and then back tomorrow night at 5.30 for eat and 7 o'clock service, amen. So Let's continue to pray. Find you somewhere tonight and get a hold of the Lord and pray for this meeting. And pray God to give us what we need. Amen. Uh, we got plenty of food left, I think. There's some uh, hamburger steak and rice and you're good. Amen. Go out there and eat yourself. If you didn't get nothing, if you're still hungry and want to eat again, go get you something. Amen. Uh, God supplied it all, all week and been great in that also. We appreciate everything. Amen. So let's dismiss in prayer and we'll ask the blessing on that food again. We pray to the Lord that God will continue to help us. Amen. God help us. Michael Ray's getting his staples out. Pray for his mama. Amen. <laughs> He's tough. Amen. He's tough. Mama's woman ain't fine. Amen. Uh, but they
they said, but Brother Wayne had left. They had got some, uh, some information that uh, his brother, Tuck, a lot of y'all know Tuck around here, his wife, Linda, fell, and they believe she broke her hip. She just fell. It just happened. So I guess they were trying to figure out what was going on there. So remember them in prayer. It was good to see Brother Wayne in that one. Amen. He had to leave early, but I understand his family was going on there, so you pray for them. Amen. Let's dismiss him in prayer. All hearts clear? Yes, don't forget her surgery tomorrow, amen. Pray that it go successful like Miss Dawes did today. Pray God continue to heal her up. Thank God, amen. Remember one another in prayer. Amen, Miss Dawes, appreciate that. Amen. Anything else? Remember Brother John out of town? Miss Lynette, probably remember her more than Brother John. She's about to go crazy, amen. Be get back soon, amen. We miss him, amen, this week. Amen. All right, let's dismiss him in prayer. We didn't have Tim Moody, my son-in-law, but Tim, how about dismissing us in prayer tonight? Pray for the food. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Remember God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Amen. All God's people said. Amen. Amen.